Yes, indeed. The Fortean Digital Shaman. Lord of Ord. And we're, or I am, back reading uh, Journey. Uh, Journeys Out of the Body by Robert uh, Monroe. Sorry about that. Delight. I'm a little a little out of it. We're now at chapter 8 and oh, good news. Uh, I started writing my book finally. I got my first 1500 words done. I'm going to try my best to write at least a thousand words a day, minimum. Start in the morning and see how it goes. So, should be an interesting book. At least it'll be interesting to me. Anyways, chapter eight. Cause, cause the Bible tells me so. If human being, if the human being has a second body, if the second body survives what we call death. If personality and character continue to exist in this new old form, what then? Again, an old, age-old question that pleads for an answer. To date, in 12 years of non-physical activities, I find no evidence that to substantiate the biblical notion of God uh, and an afterlife in a place called heaven. Perhaps I have found this and simply haven't recognized it. It is quite possible. It may be that I am not qualified. On the other hand, much of what I have uh, encountered could be some basics which can be distorted through hundreds of years. Let's start with prayer, which is supposed to be a direct communication with God. As we are taught to pray today, it is as if a chemical formula is recited without any knowledge of the original intent or meaning of the ingredients. Or the way our children sing, London Bridge is falling down, with no knowledge of the original meaning of the song. Our entire civilization is filled with such irrational habits. Evidently, prayer is one of these. Somewhere, someone know, knew how to pray. He tried to teach others. A few learned the methodology. Others absorbed only the words. And the words themselves became altered and changed over the years. Gradually, the technique was lost until accidentally rediscovered periodically through the ages. In the latter case, only rarely has that rediscoverer been able to convince others that the old established way is not quite right. This is all I can report. The old established way is not enough. Or as I say, perhaps I am not qualified. Or still, it may be that my prayer training was insufficient or improper. At any rate, it didn't work for me. Here is an illustration. On one non-physical excursion, I was speeding through nothing back to the physical with everything apparently well under control. Without warning, I rammed into a solid wall of some predetermined, pre-impenetrable material. I wasn't hurt, but I was utterly shocked. The material was hard and solid and seemed to be made of huge plates of steel overlapping slightly and welded together. Each had a uh, slight curve as if part of a globe. Hmm. Interesting. I've seen something similar to that in one of my dreams. My lucid dreams. I tried to push through it, but could not. 
I went up and down and to the right and to the left. I was absolutely sure my physical body lay beyond this barrier. After what seemed an hour of scratching, clawing, and pushing at this barrier, I prayed. I used every prayer I had ever learned and made up a few special ones. I meant every word and more than I had ever meant anything in my life. I was that frightened. Nothing happened. I was still plastered against the barrier, unable to get through and back to my physical body. I panicked, I clawed, screamed, and sobbed. After this proved fatal, I finally calmed down, only out of emotional exhaustion, feeling lost, I lay there and rested, clinging to the cold, hard wall. I don't know how long I laid there until the ability to think objectively returned, but it did. I couldn't stay there forever, or at least I didn't want to. It seemed an impossible situation, where before I had encountered an apparently impossible situation. Wait a minute. It seemed an impossible situation where before I had encountered an apparently impossible situation. I remember years before a friend and I had purchased an airplane whose flight characteristics we did not know. The only reason we bought this particular plane was that it was cheap and good condition. After several practice flights around the field, we decided to take it up for air, air for air, acrobatics with borrowed parachutes we took off and headed up to around 10,000 feet we took it through several lazy eights a few sloppy loops and several spins everything seemed all right after climbing back to altitude we nosed the ship down slightly and popped stick and rudder to go into a snap roll. The next thing we knew, we were in a spin. We center stick and forward and accepted, and the accepted recovery procedure. It had worked before beautifully, but not this time. The spin began fluttering fast and was developing a whip-like action, opposite rudder against the, the spin, burst of power, and none had any effect on the spin. If anything, the spin worsened and the ground was coming up fast. Bill looked around f from the front cockpit and his, his face white, he yelled at me over the window, roar, we better get out here, we better get out of here. I was ready to leave too. Only thing that kept me there a few more seconds was the possible loss of the airplane for which I saved uh, so long. I reasoned, we've tried everything except the procedure that violates the rules. The one thing not to do if you're in a spin, pull back on the stick. What did I have to lose? I pulled back on the stick. The ship straightened out the spin immediately and gathering flying speed. I rolled it until the earth was where, well, it, where it belonged. We landed safely, crawled out shakily, and sat on the ground. I had fallen into an, an out, outside spin. Neither of us had seen such a spin before, much less tried one. I remembered the outside spin. I tried to apply the concept as I lay there, uh, panting against the barrier. Forward, up and down, right and left, no good. There was just one remaining direction, although my knowledge said definitely it was not right. I couldn't make things any worse to try, so I did. Then only a few moments later, I was back in the physical shaken but safe. Which way? It was obvious in hindsight 
away from the barrier back in the direction from which I had been traveling. Why, th why this worked, I don't know. Nor do I know what the barrier was. Perhaps I could be rationalized. Th it could be rationalized that prayer did work. I did get back, didn't I? If it did, it was not the manner uh, that the religion taught, that religion taught, taught me. No helping angel came hurrying to give me aid and comfort. Another time, I was visiting my brother and my family overnight. Shortly after retiring to the guest room, I went to bed, went to bed for some much needed rest. If it has any bearing, the headboard of my bed backed against the wall separating my room from that of my four-year-old niece. Her bed was directly against the same wall. As I stretched out in the dark, a familiar surge of vibration came, and I decided to slip out for a moment just to test being in this condition away from home. The moment I left the physical, I became aware of three beings in the room. I stayed cautiously close to my physical body as they came nearer. They started to pull at me, not hard, but deliberately as they came, as they, they came, as to, okay, they, uh, not hard, but deliberately, me. they were having a good time at it. I tried to stay calm, but there were three of them. I wasn't sure I could get back into the physical quickly enough before the, they pulled me away. So I, I prayed again. I used every prayer I knew. I asked God to help me. I prayed in the name of Jesus Christ for help. I tried a few saints I had heard of through my uh, Catholic wife. The result, my tormentors laughed loudly and worked me over more enthusiastically. Listen to him prayer to his gods, one chuckled most contemptuously. Listen to him. I think I got a little angry after that and began to push back and got close to my physical body and dove in. I wasn't exactly fighting back, but I certainly didn't remain passive. That's the key, yeah, he's right. I sit up in the physical, most relieved to be back. Even as I sat up, I heard a child crying. I was coming from my, it was coming from the room beyond the wall. I waited several minutes and expecting my sister-in-law to come and calm the little girl and get her back to sleep. After some 10 minutes, the, the little girl Jay still had not stopped. I got up and went out to the adjoining bedroom. My sister-in-law had the little girl who was still sobbing deeply in her arms and was crying to comfort her. I asked what was wrong. Could I help? She'll be all right in a little while. I think my sister-in-law replied, she must have had a nightmare or a bad dream. I can't seem to wake, to wake her up. I asked how long the girl had been crying. Oh, just a few minutes before you came in. She isn't like this. She usually sleeps very soundly. I offered again to help if needed and went back to my room. Some time later, little Jay quieted down and Evelyn went to bed, went to sleep. Was my niece's trance-like nightmare a con coincidence? Or perhaps some new praying technique I needed on my part? There are many more such incidences, but they followed much the same pattern. When I tapped into when I tapped the conventional accepted approach to prayer, there are, however, more positive prospects to report regarding heaven and hell. If they exist, they are somewhere in locale too. In non-physical trips uh, to locale too, often there is a layer or an area which one must pass through. As mentioned earlier, 
it seems to be part of locale two. It's closest to here or now, and in some way most related. It is a gray, black, hungry ocean where the slightest motion attracts nibbling and tormenting beings. It is as if you are the bait dangled in the vast sea. If you move slowly and don't react to the curious fish who come to investigate, you pass through without much incident. If you move slowly and don't react to the curious fish who come to investigate, you, you pass through you pass through without much incident. Moving violently and and fight back and they uh, then more excited denizens come rushing in to bite and pull and push and shove. Could this be the borders of hell? It is easy to conclude that a momentary penetration of these nearby layers would be would bring demons and devils to mind as the chief inhabitants. They seem subhuman, yet have an evident, evident ability to act and think independently. Who and what are they? I don't know. I haven't taken the trouble to stay there long enough to find out. Only by terrified trial and error did I find the method to pass through in reasonable peace. In these words were thoughts are okay in these worlds where thoughts are not only things but are everything including you your poison your perfection is of your own making if you are a remorseless killer you may end up in that part of locale too where all are this of uh, the same design this truly would be hell for such people for there would be no incident innoc innocence uh, defenseless victims project this outward and you can begin to perceive the merited of variations your destination in heaven or hell of the locale 2 seems to be grounded completely within the framework of your deepest consent and perhaps no conscious motivations emotions and personality drives the most consistent and strongest of these acts as your homing device uh, when you enter this realm the most consistent and strongest of these acts as your homing device hmm. I am sure of this because it always works this way when I have traveled non-physically in locale 2 it works this way whether I want it to or not the least stray des desire at the wrong time or a deep-seated emotion I wasn't aware of diverts my trip into in that like direction. <clears throat> Some of the resulting destinations have had all the aspects of hell to me. Others might possibly be construed as heaven and some differ in practice only slightly from our activities in here now or here now so if locale 2 seems to have portions of hell and doesn't quite live up to our notion of heaven what then where do we look for the guidepost where are the God and heaven that we worship I have missed something. Yet, at times, in visiting Locale 2, a very unusual event per periodically occurs. It makes no difference where in Locale 2, the event is the same. In the midst of normal activity, whatever it may be, there is a distant signal, almost like a 
her, her, heraldic trumpet. Everyone takes this signal calmly, and with it, everyone stops speaking, and whether, whatever he may be doing, it is a signal that he or they is coming through his kingdom. There is no awestruck prostration or falling down on one's knees. Rather, an attitude is most a matter of fact. It is an occurrence to which all are accustomed, and to comply takes absolute precedence over everything else. There is there are no exceptions. At the signal, each living thing lies down. My impression is on their backs, bodies arched uh, to expose the abdomen, uh, uh, not the genitals, where the head turns to one side so that one does not see him as he passes by. The purpose seems to be to form a living road over which he can travel. Yeah. Let's go back to this. And the signal each each living thing lies down. My impression is on their backs, bodies arched to expose the abdomen and not the genitals. With head turned to one side so that one does not see him as he passes by. It's so bizarre. The purpose seems to be to form a living road over which he can travel. They have gleaned the idea that occasionally he will select someone from the living bridge and that person is never seen or heard from again. The purpose of the ab ab abdominal uh, exposure is an expression of faith and complete submissiveness. The abdomen being the most vulnerable part of the body and the area that can suffer damage most easily. There is no movement, not even thought, as he passed by. Everything he, everything has come to a momentary standstill, full and complete, while he passes. And several times that I have experienced this, I lay down with the others. At the time the thought of doing otherwise was, inco was inconceivable. As he passed, there is a roaring musical sound and a feeling of radiant, uh, uh, irresistible living force of ultimate power that peaks over and fades in the distance. Why do you say he? How do you know it's a he and not a she or something else? I remember wondering once what would have what happened to me if he discovered my presence as a, a temporary visitor? I wasn't sure I wanted to find out. After he pass, his passing, everyone gets up again and resumes their activities. There is no comment or mention of the incident. No further thought of it. There is complete acceptance of the event as an ordinary part of their lives. This is the great yet subtle difference. It is an action of casual, as casual as halting for a traffic light at a busy intersection or waiting at a railroad crossing when the signal indicates that a train is coming. You are unconcerned and yet feel unspoken respect for the power represented in the passing train. The event is also impersonal. And this God, or God's Son, he, or His representative, three times I have gone to a place that I cannot find words to describe accurately. Again, it is, <clears throat> it is this vision, this interpretation, this 
temporary visitation to this place or state of being that brings the message we have heard so often throughout the history of man. I am sure that this may be part of the ultimate heaven as our religions conceive it. It must also be the nirvana, the the, the Shabbat Shem Samahide, okay, the Samahide, the supreme experience related to us by the mystics of the ages. So the Sam Madai, if that's pronounced right, it is truly a state of being, very likely interpreted by the individual in many different ways. To me, it was a place or condition of pure peace yet exquisite emotion. It was as if you were floating in warm, soft clouds where there is no up or down, where nothing exists as the separate piece of matter. The warmth is not merely around you, it is of you and through you. Your perception is dazzled and overwhelmed by perfect by the perfect environment. The cloud in which you float is swept swept by rays of light of shapes and hues that are constantly changing and each and each is good as you bathe in them as they pass over you. Ruby red rays of light are something beyond what we know as light because no light ever felt this meaningful and all the colors of the spectrum come and get constantly and go constantly never harshly each brings a different soothing and restful happiness it is as if you are within and part of the clouds surrounding an eternal glowing a sunset with every changing pattern of living color you also change you respond and drink it into you the eternity of the blues and yellows greens and reds and the complexities of the intermediates all are familiar to you this is where you belong this is home as you move slowly and effortlessly through the cloud, there is music around you. It is not something of which you become aware. It is there all the time. You uh, vibrate in a harmony with the music. Again, this is more than the music you know back there. It is only those harmonies that delicate and dynamic melodic passages, the multiple, vo- the multi-voice counterpart, and the poignant overtones, overtones. It is only those that have invoked in, in you the deep, incoherent emotion back there. The mundane is missing. Chores of human sounding voices. Ch- chores choirs of human sounding voices echo in wordless song infinite patterns of strings and all shades of subtle harmony interweave in cycles yet developing themes if you hear the music in the background of my son ironically he, he just decided just right now as I'm reading this to pick up his guitar after all this time weeks and months you resonate with them. There is no source for which the music comes. It is there all around you, in you. You are a part of it. It is you. It is the purity of a truth of which you have been only, you have had only a glimpse. This is the feast, the tiny tidbits you tasted before back there had made you hop for the, the, existence of whole the nameless emotion longing nostalgia sense of destiny 
that you fell back there when you started stared at the cloud layer layered sunset in Hawaii when you stood quietly among the tall waving trees in the silent forest when a musical selection passage or song recalled memories of the past and brought forth a longing for which were which for which there was no associated memory when you longed for the place where you belonged whether city town country nation or family these are now fulfilled your home you are where you belong where you always should have been most important you are not alone with you beside you interlocked in you or others they do not have names nor are you aware of them as shapes but you know them and you are bounded to them with a great single knowledge they are ex- exactly like you they are you and like you they are home you feel with them like gentle waves of electricity passing between you a completeness of love of which all the facets you have experienced are but segments an incomplete portion only here the emotion is without need of intense display or demonstration you give and receive as an automatic action with no deliberate effort it is not something you need and the needs you the reaction reaching out is gone the interchange flow, flows naturally you aren't aware of the differences in sex you yourself as a part of the whole are both male and female positive negative electron proton male woman love moves to you and from you parent child sibling idol uh, an ideal an ideal all interplay in soft waves about you in you and through you you are in perfect balance because you are where you belong you are home within all this yet not a part of it you are aware of the source of the entire span of your experience of you of the vastness beyond your ability to perceive and or to imagine here you know and easily accept the existence of the father your true father the father the creator of all that is and was you are one of his countless creations how and why you don't know this is not important you you are happy simply because you are in your right place where you truly belong each of the the three times each of the three times i went there i did not return voluntarily i came back sadly reluctantly someone helped me return each time after i returned i suffered intense nostalgia and loneliness for days i felt as an alien might among strangers in a land where things were not right where everything and everyone was so different and so wrong when compared with where you belonged acute loneliness nostalgia something akin to homesickness uh, so great was it that i have not tried to go there again was this heaven once i tried to simulate there on this world i remembered as a child swimming in a pool that had underwater deep hued colored lights set in the walls i remembered specifically which pool had featured such lights our country home had a swimming pool 
so I, so I set to work. We installed underwater lights and used color on the lights. And try as I might, I couldn't get the deep hues I remembered. Too much power was required. Also, I put in an underwater speaker so that you could lie in the water with your ears submerged and listen to the music from the system in the house. This worked quite well, but it was not there or close to it. There was no there was one pe peculiar item upon visiting the site of my childhood. The pool I remember was there, but it did not have colored lights under the water. No one, including old friends who swam with me in the pool, could remember this pool as ever having colored lights under the water. Reality, reality. And that is the end of chapter 8. It's quite interesting. You're talking about not reacting and being slow going through that place where those feeding fish or those creatures, right, those beings nipping at you and all that. And the slower and more you uh, you didn't react or get hostile or aggressive toward it, the less likely to do anything to you. It's like this in this life, isn't it? It really is. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. You're going to try. Go all the way. Otherwise, don't even start. If you are going to try, go all the way. This could mean losing girlfriends, wives, relatives, jobs, and maybe your mind. Yeah.